Hey guys, Dan here, and we've got Tim over Zoom for Dan Does Disney. Hey Tim. Hi everybody, and we will be reviewing this classic, um, not Old Yeller, but the sequel that's also in this two disc pack of Savage Sam is the sequel to Old Yeller. Yes, uh, in, in name really only, but uh, we'll talk about some of the, the uh, sequel things in there. But yes, uh, Old Yeller and Savage Sam come in a nice uh, two pack. Savage Sam has zero bonus features, um, but Old Yeller has several that we talked about when we reviewed uh, that. They're all on, I think, the first disc or something. Does yeah, it say? There's, no, there's a there's a disc two has a bunch of uh, remembering the classics, conversations with Tommy Kirk. Um, yeah, Lost Treasures, the the Ranch of the Golden Oak, um, I guess where they they filmed it. Definitely. Yeah um yeah so that's i guess those were from the original old yeller two disc or something that they just ported over for the for the bonus but um but yeah we talked about some of those when we back when we did old yeller uh back in the day but this one now from 1963 six years after old yeller came out um and this was not uh, very successful it was critically uh you know didn't go too well and it made three million dollars domestically which I think is actually not bad for 1963, but that's uh, less than half of what old Yeller made uh, six years earlier. So they, they considered it to be not a success. And this is yet another one not available on Disney plus. Yes. And uh, this one, I can see a little bit more of why it's not on Disney plus, And we can talk about that a little bit later, um, yes. but I, I understand this one. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it's kind of odd because Old Yeller is so popular, but yeah, I mean, this feels like one that um, they would want to kind of sweep under the rug. And, and again, we, we'll talk about that, but um, I honestly don't have too much in terms of the background of this movie. Um, Wikipedia had sort of the bulk of what I found on it, um, but essentially um, this was another novel from uh, the guy that wrote Old Yeller. And Disney bought the rights to the novel before it even was released uh, in 1961. He bought it. It came out February of 62 uh, for twenty five thousand dollars to buy those rights. And then uh, Fred Gibson was hired to write the screenplay. He was uh, in full blown alcoholic mode, apparently, and uh, was was suffering some rage issues and had a bunch of problems. And then uh, the, the worst story uh, maybe we've heard on a personal level behind the scenes from a Disney movie is when uh, Fred's son, Mike found the family dog, the inspiration for Savage Sam chained and murdered in the shed uh, at their house. So uh, the kid, Mike returns to school and the next week kills himself. And then uh, Gibson, the senior, his wife leaves him a month after Savage Sam came out. So a lot of like really ugly behind the scenes stuff with this one. Yeah, um, and then uh, he he wrote a third book for the, the this this series as well, um, and it wasn't published prior to his death. And then I guess his other son found it um, in a bunch of papers, and then it was published after his death. And that one's called uh, Little Arliss, and it's about Arliss, his character, and like he goes searching for a horse or something like that. Hmm. Okay. Well, good old Arliss. Is that, is that a Disney movie? No, they never made it into a Disney movie. Okay. Um, it went into a children's TV special. So um, I don't I don't think Disney had anything to do with it. Okay. Um, but yeah, so Gibson wrote the book that this was based on, and then he like co-wrote the screenplay with uh, William Turbeg or Turberg. Um and the only other really things I have, um, so they did change the Uncle Beck character, who is played by Brian Keith, who uh, gets top billing here, did not exist in the book at all. They sort of added him to uh, be an amalgamation of the mother and father. And then um, Tommy Kirk, this was like one of his biggest roles that we've seen. And Walt actually wanted him to be the top billed star, you know, top of credit. But uh, Brian Keith, I guess was was still a pretty big star at the time so they said no we're gonna do that i don't know why in walt disney's own movie he didn't win that argument uh, I, I couldn't really find anything about that but apparently he wanted tommy kirk to have top billing and uh, somebody along the line said no that's all i got 
Yeah, it, it was probably some type of contract or something. That's the only probably the only reason why maybe mm. Brian Keith. Well, that would make sense. If he was, but, he, top- but Tommy Kirk is in this. I mean, this is the most we've seen of him um, in several movies for sure. Yeah, this is probably his most featured thing since either probably since the first old yeller um that's what i was saying that he's shaggy dog and that's kind of like mo- mainly him but with a little bit of fred mcmurray um but yeah. this is definitely his movie um i so, would say he's in this more than savage sam yeah so, so uh we have savage sam it's uh the third movie out of six uh for 1963 um, and it's the sequel to The Old Yeller, um, based off of Fred Gibson's novel in 62. Um, and uh, it takes place in 1870. Um, and we have the 18-year-old Travis Coates. Um, and he's left in charge of his younger brother, Arliss, and the family Texas farm, um, while their parents are visiting an ailing grandparent. Um, uh, Arliss and his dog, Savage Sam, go tracking a bobcat um as bud uh Searcy comes to warn the coats is about a, a band of renegade apaches um travis and uh bud's daughter elizabeth uh go searching for arliss and uh they wind up all all three of them of travis elizabeth and Arliss all being captured by the Apaches. Um, and uh, Savage Sam is left for dead, but he's really just unconscious. Their uncle Beck, um, he witnesses this and he forms a posse to go after him. Meanwhile, Travis does escape um, and he meets up with Savage Sam, who is hot on the trail. Um, uh, and he tries to rescue Elizabeth and Arliss. And with the help of the posse, Travis and Sam might be able to save the day. Um, and that is the story of Savage Sam. So casting wise, we have top billing. We have Brian Keith um, and he plays Uncle Beck. And as you mentioned, uh, he basically takes over the, the, the character of Jim Coates, which was the father figure played by Fess Parker in the first one. But um, as we, we talked about in, in videos past, Fess Parker had a, I think maybe after that movie, maybe he did one more or maybe it fell through, but it was basically he he cut ties with Disney. And uh, so they had to come up with a solution, I guess. Uh, and they were like, oh, we have this Brian Keith guy and he's going to play Uncle Beck. And that's how it basically probably happened. Um, have we seen Brian Keith before or I just know him? No, we know Brian Keith. We've seen him. Uh, he was the dad in Parent Trap. We just saw him in the. The Moon Pilot one. Moon Pilot was his last one. That was with the the monkey in space type thing. Um, and then he was in uh, the river rafting one as well uh, when they were going down the rafting thing. Um, okay. I, I, I thought I had known him from these, but I we do so many of these, it gets hard to yeah. follow. Okay. And uh, uh, he, uh, he, he's an Emmy-nominated actor for a television show. I forget what it is. I, don't, I didn't write it down. Um, uh, something about family or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, family affair. That's where I or, or yeah. That's where uh, I know him from mostly before we started doing this. Yeah. So next we'll see him in a Tiger Walks in '64, um, and then uh, we have Tommy Kirk. He reprises his role of Travis Coates. We last saw him two movies pr- prior to this, and that was Son of Flubber. We'll next see him in uh 64 as well with uh the misadventures of merlin jones and then uh we have kevin corcoran uh he played he reprised his role as arliss coates we last saw him in bon voyage so that was a few movies ago that was uh beginning of 61 i think so about five or six movies for him Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we'll next see him in a tiger walks with uh brian keith um we have the great Jeff York back. We have. I was so happy to see him again, Tim. We haven't seen him since '57, which was the the last Old Yeller movie. Um, and he plays Bud Siri again, uh, Searcy again. Um, and this Wait, is that his... was the last time we saw him. Wasn't he in Toby Tyler? No, that was what you called the cheap Jeff York. Oh, that, that was... was the knockoff. They got a knockoff York. That was the guy that was in Zorro. 
I forget his uh, name. Okay. He he was under contract for Zorro, and then they had him do Toby Tyler, and then he also did Babes in Toyland. Um, That's right. So sadly, this is the last Disney role um, for Jeff York. Um, I tried looking up to see if he was a a, digi, a Disney legend, and he is not um, from anywhere. What? And uh, hey, any Disney people watching this video, Jeff York should be a Disney legend. He was in Old Yeller. He was he was unrecognizable in that giant terrain movie. Um, he was uh, Mike Fink in the the Davy Crockett. Um, so he he's given us a lot of great roles, um, and each one was kind of different. It was like even in that the train robbery one, uh, I don't know, great locomotive chase or something like that. Um, well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, Fess Parker, I, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but like he was the same in every movie we, we watched. He was basically just Davy Crockett. Sometimes he changed his hat, but he was but, always the same. And then one time he had a mustache, which was uh, <laughs> right. The one time he was mustachioed. But Jeff York, I mean, it was like every single time you saw him, it was something completely different, which is why. I even thought he was the Toby Tyler guy because I was like, it kind of looked like him. Yeah. And it wouldn't have surprised me if it was him. Yeah. So uh, we have um, Marta Kristen. Um, she plays Lisbeth Searcy. She replaces Beverly Washburn, who played her in the first one. Um, this is her film debut, and it's our only Disney movie. And famously, people will probably recognize her from playing Judy Robinson in A Lost in Space. Um, and then uh, she had a breakout movie role, uh, which was uh, after this, which was Beach Blanket Bingo with our friend Annette Ponticello. Yeah, okay. I uh, wonder if I ever actually saw that movie, but yes, I'm well aware of it. Yeah, but uh, Marta Kristen is still alive with us. Um, uh, so she... Um, she did a, like, a cameo role in the the horrible Matthew LeBlanc uh, Lost in Space when they remade that. Um, but she was in, I don't know how many episodes of Lost in Space. There were probably close to 80 or something like that. Yeah, I was going to say, it ran three seasons. So pro yeah, probably 70 or 80. So uh, we have uh, Dewey Martin. Um, he's one of the posse members. Uh, his character's name is Lester White. Um he plays Daniel Boone in the, the magical world of Disney, Daniel Boone's. Uh, I think there's like four episodes of Daniel Boone and those not to be confused with the Daniel Boone television show, which was Fast Parker, uh, I believe. Oh, that's right. I was going to say that sounded yeah. familiar. OK, so then they did. It was at Disney, too. They did movies of it. No, the the, the TV show uh, Daniel Boone was not Disney. They just okay. did disney daniel boone which like was four episodes of something interesting okay um and then we have slim pickens he's one of the the posse members as well his character's name is willie K uh krupp um we actually saw him once before in a small role in tonka which was uh seems like forever ago but uh next up we'll see him in never a dull moment in uh 68 um, oh, don't know that one I've never heard of it either, but uh, most famously, we like probably as viewers, we know him from uh, Doctor Strangelove is probably one of it or Blazing Saddles or two famous roles, not Disney, but uh, Apple Dumpling Gang is probably his most famous uh, Disney role. Um, so that's the cast. Director wise, we have uh, Norman Tokar. Uh, we last saw him uh, behind the camera directing uh Big Red uh, was his last one. I think that was his first Disney movie. He has a handful of them. They seem to be all uh, animal related. Um, and uh, his, yeah, that next... was his first of any uh, any feature film. He came from. We talked about this before, but he yeah. came from Leave It to Beaver and uh, that. Uh, but yeah, then he did mostly Disney movies after that. Yeah, ninety three episodes of Leave It to Beaver. Um, and next we'll see him with a tiger walks next year in 64 um so he's reteaming with uh brian keith and kevin corcoran for that um and uh that is the director um so, he directed apple dumpling gang as well oh yeah yeah so uh there's slim pickens and uh <laughs> yep uh, so like we mentioned before fast parker did not return for the role of the father dorothy mcguire also didn't return for the role as the mother um 
I think that was the only Dorothy McGuire's only Disney role was the the old yeller. Um, and uh, Savage Sam was played by a hound dog named Tom Dooley. Um, and it was his first movie um, being the uh, a dog star in a first movie. And uh, Kevin Corcoran helped train him. Um, so for a movie called Savage Sam, I expected a lot more Savage Sam. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, listen, I, I'm glad Kevin Corcoran trained him, but uh, yeah, he was barely even in this movie. It was it was a, a blip in the, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's in some of the scenes, but like compared to Old Yeller, which is like very heavily about the dog, um, this was much less about the dog than I was anticipating. Yeah, and like I was like, oh, did Disney change that? No, I I looked at the synopsis of the book, and. It is basically the same thing. The only thing different is instead of Jim Coates going looking for his son, you have Uncle Beck looking for his nephew. Um, and that's pretty much the only thing I could really see that changed. Um, uh, the love interest is still there. Um, in the third book, I uh, actually, I looked at the synopsis for that one. The third book, uh, Travis and Elizabeth are actually married in that book. Um, and uh, it's, it, the first two book of Old Yeller and Savage Sam are from Travis's point of view. And the third book, um, Little Arliss, obviously is from Little Arliss's point of view. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, it was uh, not very good. Um, so I didn't think it was bad. Oh, I uh, thought it was bad. Well, I, I, I would like, so. I thought acting wise, I thought Tommy Kirk was really great in this movie. I thought uh, it might have not been his best role, but it gave him a lot more to do than the, some of the previous uh, performances we've seen, like the small roles and stuff like that. I thought he kind of held his old, like held this movie together with his per- acting performance. And I thought uh, Marta uh, Kristen was better than, uh, Beverly Washburn and I thought they had a pretty good chemistry for um, for Tommy Kirk being in the closet at this time or someone out of the closet. Um, I thought he still was able to have a decent chemistry with her. Yeah, I mean, look, look, uh, you know, for for the Tommy Kirk enthusiast, this is the reason to watch this movie. You know, if if you're a fan of him because you liked how he looked, well, he shirt was half the movie. So you got that. But yes, I would agree. This is one of the more meany roles that he's done i mean he is he basically is the star of the movie i could see why walt was sort of fighting for that um and i i don't think he's really ever led a movie before um he's usually the side character or the son to fred mcmurray or or whatever um but kevin corcoran i mean we've seen him now grow up from um I, what was he in old yeller probably eight or nine or something yeah. or maybe less than that um and he was you know kind of annoying but he was like cute and it was like okay that's how nine-year-olds act between the horrible script they had him saying these things and acting like he was still like nine years old but he's clearly like 13 or something i mean this was what five they made it five years after old yeller yeah so he's got to be at least 13 or something in real life and they have him scream all of his lines his voice is cracking all over the place because he's in puberty now. And it was so irritating the entire movie. Every time it was by far his worst performance. Yeah. I mean, he was irritating, but I mean, I kind of overlooked that to kind of focus in on Tommy Kirk performance. Um, And then you also had Jeff York there as well. I thought all his scenes were great as well. Um, but I will agree that it, it's not a great movie. I don't think I hated it as much as you did. Um, but probably the reason why you're not going to find this on Disney Plus is because two things. One is there's a lot of animal cruelty in this movie. They have a dog fighting a mountain uh, bobcat. They have them tackling a fox. They have they have a lot of animal cruelty. But well, and we saw and we saw some of that in Old Yeller. But you can't not have Old Yeller out there. Yes. Um, so more importantly, the reason is because of uh, the Native Americans portrayal in this movie. Um, usually when you have 
Uh, we talked about it before with a lot of the, the previous Native American movies. You're like, okay, well, there's some bad Indians or Native Americans, and then you have some good ones to count that there aren't really any good Native Americans in this movie. Um, no. th- there is a couple lines that they, I guess they try to help the situation where one of the posse members were trying to be like, well, if all your land was taken, wouldn't you be mad and doing all this stuff? And then the other guy he was talking to got really pissed off because he's like, no, because they cut all my family, stuff like that. So they try to have a couple lines in there to like justify the behavior of uh, Native Americans. And I will say that during this time, yes, there was probably a lot of bad Native American relations during this time frame that they're portraying. But usually Disney would have a couple spots to kind of like balance it out a little bit. They didn't balance them out at all. Um, and I understand that that was the time that this was made, um, but just doesn't hold up um, now. It's like, but, the- but see here, and here's the thing, and that and that whole thing, everything you just said, that is the other like, other than Kevin Corcoran being super super annoying, um, that that is the thing that does it for me. Like, it, yeah. this movie to me felt like it was back in like the movies we watched in the mid fifties, but even those like Dave, even David Crockett had like some redeemable native Americans and stuff. And then we had Tonka and, you know, obviously, like you said, this is, you know, from a different time, we're talking about now 60 years ago. Um, and obviously certain things aren't going to hold up, but I felt like even these Disney movies of the time, we're making some sort of progress as we moved along here. This felt like a huge step backwards. And I, I can't figure out why other than I guess it's probably what was in this guy's book. But, you know, this guy murders his dog with his rage issues. I don't know if we need to be uh, going verbatim from what's in the book. Yeah, I from what I read is that um, he got inspiration for this book. Um hearing another tale of someone being captured by Native Americans and then escaping and stuff like that. So basically he heard a tale of something and then it was like, oh, well, that's a perfect sequel idea for for Old Yeller. Um, and uh, But it's not. Um, well, it's not. And it really, it's barely attached to Old Yeller. Like, yes, you have a couple of the people playing the same characters. Um, but and the music, the guy that did the music uh, was the same, Oliver Wallace. He did the music for both pictures. So, okay, that had a little bit of connective tissue there. But, it, it, like, unless you straight up told me that this was a sequel to Old Yeller, because, you know, I don't remember necessarily the names of the kids from Old Yeller, you know, that we watched years ago. Um, I I don't think I would, because Tommy Kirk and Corcoran play brothers all the time. I wouldn't yeah. necessarily associate oh, this is the old Yeller sequel, especially because Fast Parker's not there. It just, it seemed like a very, very flimsy excuse to do a sequel. Yeah. And I I really think that like, maybe like there was a lot of issues going on with Fred Gibson, I guess at this time that like, maybe he was like, oh, I'm going to write a sequel to my number one selling book, which is old Yeller. And just because it's a sequel, it's will get me out of all this issues that I'm having in my, in my personal life. And then Walt was like, Oh, you're making a sequel to old yeller. Yeah. We're going to do this. Um, I think that's probably what happened. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I mean, you know, I, I guess at this point, Walt wasn't that like hands-on with everything going on, but did he not read the book and say like, okay, well we need to change X, Y, and Z. And we need to make the native American a, li- a little bit sympathetic um, at all you know just because he bought the script doesn't mean he has to do it exactly the way it was written yeah and like Uh like you already mentioned davy crockett but like yeah the there was some some negative portrayals of native americans but then you would also have davy crockett who was a big advocate about native american rights and was fighting for the rights in congress and stuff like that which i never knew about but like and that's true history that was real that was real and like they, they they decided to make a whole 
television episode about just that and like the, like yes so it's as if nobody may, making this movie even watched that like yeah. they just I, to me tim and i i admit you are absolutely correct tommy kirk gives maybe his best performance that we've seen um certainly in a dramatic role i mean he's done you know some i mean i you know he's funny and shaggy dog and everything but yes in terms of a dramatic role I, this could be his best um and he would be the reason to see it jeff york was great to see him again but everything else about this i thought was just horrible yeah i mean i i wasn't bored um i'll say that i wasn't bored but like uh yeah I can't so, say I was bored necessarily watching it, but I it did I I did wonder why we weren't seeing that much Sa- Savage Sam though. Yeah, um, I mean, if you if you're going to call it anything, be like, it should be called Travis Coates. I mean, really, it's yeah, like, but the coat story or Uncle Beck tell you know saves the day. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know this one to me to was a big miss, not only because of the things we mentioned, but just the the false advertising. You know, Babes in Toyland wasn't that good, but all right, at least it was kind of as advertised. This, as an old Yeller sequel, seems like these days when they do, like, a movie just based on, you know, from the people who brought you Bridesmaids, and it's like one, it's not Judd Apatow, it's from one producer or one writer. Um yeah. This seems like that to me. Yeah, like when they when they always advertise uh, from the director of Nightmare Before Christmas, and it's uh, it's not Tim Burton. It ain't it, right. It ain't Tim Burton. And now Jordan Peele's the latest. They you know from from the a right or from a producer of Get Out. It's like it ain't Jordan Peele. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this to me was a, a glaring example of that. And I get it. He he just made a good sequel that was a success. Well, a moderate success with uh, the Son of Flubber. Um, but yeah, this, this one for me, one of the worst we've seen, I'm going to grade it first, Tim, you're probably a bit higher than me. Uh, but this to me is a D plus. Um, I don't think it's that bad because D plus is like little's outlaw territory. And, uh, that, that was bad for me. I probably, I probably give it a C minus and that's, mainly because of Tommy Kirk. I mean, Tommy Kirk is the reason to watch this. Um, oh, agree. Um, or, I mean, if you're a big uh, movie history buff, uh, to be like, watch this and be like, kind of shake your head and be like, how did this movie get made in 63? When it should be should have been made in uh, the late 50s. Yeah. Um, type of thing. I Yeah, and so it's, to me, that's not, that's not C minus, you know, but Look, I admit this this is a great performance from Tommy Kirk. And we've seen that in so many movies o- over the, the decades that, you know, there's one really great performance or, or two, if you include uh, Jeff York, of course. Um, but God, that Corcoran, man, he was he was rough. I'm curious to see what they do with him in some of these other movies. Maybe his voice will be done changing by the time we get to the Tiger movie. Um but the script, they just had him saying and acting like he was t- still 10 years old. It did not match up with what was happening, I thought. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, another bad one, Tim. We've gotten more bad than good lately on this. Yeah, um, uh, the, the, maybe that's why a lot of them aren't on, uh, on Disney+. Plus. Um, so, so up next, we have another one not on Disney+. Plus, um, and that is... Uh, Summer Magic with Haley Mills. Yeah, that'll be our 63 Mills. Uh, this is the one where she uh, kisses that dude, right? No, no, that's the oh. next is Moon Spinners, which uh, is... A, um, I, I thought that was the magic, is that she like went to camp or something in the summer and made out with this guy. Nope, nope. Right. Um, waited two years. They uh, cut it out of uh, the... What is it? In Search of the Castaways and uh, waited... Yeah. For her first on-screen kiss, um, but uh, that, that will finish the year with two Disney pluses. After that, which is the Incredible Journey, and back to animation, which is uh, the Sword, Sword and the Stone. Stone. Yep. Yeah, and that was that, the big uh, Christmas release of of uh, sixty three. Yeah, and I looked at sixty uh, fours, and there's seven movies, 
four of them are on Disney Plus. So uh, well, a lot of the ones we've been talking about too, the Tom Thomasina movie, uh, Merlin Jones, the Moon Spinners, and of course, you know, one of my all time favorites, Mary Poppins. Actually, Three Lives of Tanzania is not on Disney Plus. That's one of the oh, I just I just meant of the seven movies. Oh. There, there's some that we've talked about in yeah. in past, but uh, we know Mary Poppins is on that. Now, listen, Mary Poppins, that's going to be a big one. I I know. Um, oh. That'll be one of our longer ones. But yes, Tim, uh, thanks as always. It was, uh, you know, not not one of the best ones we've had. No, ho- hopefully uh, Summer Magic has a little bit of magic to uh, get us out of this little rut that we have been in. Yes, absolutely. All right. And uh, everybody, we'll see you all next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye. Bye, everybody.